What's up guys, Chris here back with a new video. Uh, today's video is in part sponsored by APS and the part in question is this right here, which is a set of uh, tin coated steel magazine tube cradle arms. So this right here is what holds the magazine tube in the receiver of the APS Cam 870. And it's quite an integral part because the magazine tube actually holds everything that's in front of the receiver is held in place by this. So the barrel is clamped onto the uh, and tightened onto the magazine tube. The forend, um, well, the forend is riding on a different assembly, really. But anyway, um, let's just verify here. That is steel. I'll verify that the original is not steel. Uh, probably screws are as well. Yep. So I'm gonna be installing this in my APS Cam 870 SAI shotgun, which is this. Oh, let me zoom out so we can actually see it. Uh, this right here. Let's see if I can get a shot of the original part if we go in right here is the magazine tube cradle arms so we have four screws uh, all around right so that's what we're going to replace the problem here is that in order to replace that you pretty much have to disassemble the entire rifle. So for me, I'm gonna have to remove the magazine clamp, magazine and barrel clamp, remove the magazine tube extension. If you don't have an extension, you just take off the cap. Keep in mind there's a spring in here under pressure. Um, once that is off, we'll be able to remove the barrel. It's just gonna slide off forward. Uh, then we're gonna be able to remove the Actually, we might not have to do that. I'm, I'm gonna try to do this like the least complicated way possible. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to leave the trigger plate, trigger group in place in the receiver and still get this stuff out to replace that tube. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, and I also wanna state that this is not meant to be a tutorial or how-to video. Uh, I have separate playlists for disassembly and reassembly. I'll put a link up here and there will be a link in the description as well to that. So I'm gonna get going and I'll sort of pop in and out uh, as I go along and we'll see how I do. So first order of business, like I said, remove the clamp, remove the extension, barrel off. Uh, right. Yeah, we are gonna to have to take out the, uh, I knew there was something preventing this. We are gonna to have to take out the trigger assembly because the bolt locking plate is right up here. And you can't really get to those screws unless you remove the trigger group, so. Okay, I'll get started. Okay, so magazine extension tube and outer barrel are now off. What I will try to do is I will remove the trigger plate and remove this bolt stopping plate right in here. Then I will reinstall the trigger plate because the whole reason is you have these shell latch arms in here. Right there. And if you don't have the trigger group in and you remove the magazine tube cradle arms and magazine tube, those are gonna go uh, flying in everywhere. So hopefully I'll be able to make this work. Got the trigger plate or trigger group out. So now we're left with this in the receiver and cock back on the action. You're gonna have to remove these two 
Phillips head screws in there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. In case you're having problems removing this plate from the receiver, here's a little trick you can do. Take a pair of thin pliers and grab it in the actual holes and it's gonna come out like that. So what I'm gonna do now, just for testing purposes, I'm gonna reinstall the trigger group plate and see if I can get the front assembly here out without these uh, latches coming out. These right here. Okay, so the trigger group or trigger plate is back in. I didn't drive the pins all the way. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to use a two millimeter hex wrench to undo these four screws right here. And in theory, that should allow the whole front end assembly to come out. So we'll see in a bit. Okay. So the screws have now been removed from here. And if my theory is correct, I should be able to pull this straight forward with the bolt coming out and the shell latch arms, the part that's uh, pinched up here are probably gonna go pewing, twisting or uh, pinching together, but uh, we'll see. No, I don't think there should be anything on the bolt. Yeah, that's not working out too good for me. All right. Yeah, this isn't going to work because there are cuts in this arm that are interlocking in the uh, bolt assembly. So no, we're going to have to take out the trigger group. That sucks. Hmm. You can see my attempt to pull this out with the trigger group in place has pulled on the shell latch arm here. So it's now out of alignment. All right, so this was a bad idea. So this right side, or uh, let's see, yeah, right side shell latch, latch arm has already come out due to uh, me trying to force it with the trigger plate in. But let's see what happens to the other one when I pull this assembly out. Well, actually, it came loose. So those are off and now the front assembly comes out. So yeah, my idea was pretty good, but didn't work out in the uh, real world scenario. And the reason why this is a problem is because the shell latch arms are pinched between the receiver and this stock plate here at the rear. And to install those and align them properly, we're gonna to have to go in possibly and uh, remove the stock and reseat that plate. Anyway, here is the part we're talking about. And this is attached to the magazine tube or clamped on, I should say. And these simply pop off like so. And here's the groove that they're sitting in right in here. And this slot cut goes to the bottom of the receiver. So that goes down. Let's just have a look here with the magnet. No, these are not steel. Would have been kind of pointless if they were. Gonna put a little bit of uh, lubrication on these and I um, want to put some right here where the 
forend arms are interfacing. That should be okay. So then what I like to do is I put it in this orientation and you want to make sure that the countersunk screw holes are facing out. So this is where the receiver is right here and this is the barrel end. So the screw holes want to be aligned so that are seated so they're towards the barrel end. Let's see if this is a drop in fit. So I just made a pretty big mistake here. I was trying to test fit it in the receiver like this and to make sure that it was seated all the way I took my the wooden part of my hammer and lightly tapped the front of the magazine tube and that was enough force to deform the top threads here. So I just had a hell of a time getting the magazine tube extension to actually screw back on. Uh, so don't do that. That was a bad idea. But uh, it looks like I've gotten it to where it fits in the receiver. Like this. Very, very tight fit, but that's good in this case. So. Let's uh, continue on. So what we want to do now is slide the magazine tube into the forend. Make sure these arms go in on the uh, cradle arms. I can tell already we're getting some resistance when we're getting down to the end here. So you can sort of align the arms a little bit extra by squeezing here. Right, so I got the arms aligned pretty much. <clears throat> Going to slide the magazine tube into the forend. Still pinching a little bit here at the back end, or the front, I should say. I think that's going to work itself out once uh, it's installed. It's not too bad. It's just this last, like, two centimeters. Getting a little bit of resistance, but nothing too bad. I'm going to give it a go. <clears throat> so. With that in place, you want to take your bolt and set it onto these rails. Trying to make sure, all right, it's a little bit lopsided here. Okay guys, I managed to get the cradle arms and the bolt and the shell latch arms in place without having to work back here. Basically what I did was I slid the shell latch arms into the receiver, seated them behind the plate, sorry about that, the plate here at the back, one on each end. Then I temporarily secure those with the uh, trigger plate pins. I slid the bolt and the, the uh, forend tube in. Then I had to maneuver these latches here at the front outwards because they have a tendency to want to go pinch in. So you have to push those out in order to be able to slide the magazine tube and the magazine tube cradle arms back into place. 
So I think that saved me a little bit of work at least. I'm gonna install the bolt blocking plate in here now uh, and then carefully slide the forend forwards and secure the magazine tube cradle arms with the screws. Got the bolt stop plate installed here and you want to make sure you have a little at least a little bit of thread lock on those because if that plate works itself loose it's, it's going to jam up the uh, action here if it drops too low so definitely don't over tighten it because the holes and the threads are very very fine but uh, just hand tighten it make sure it's secure in there so now I'm going to hold my hand up here to make sure the magazine tube doesn't slide out. Bring that forward, exposing the screw holes up here, and I'm gonna install the screws. So, wish me luck. Uh, by the way, the same thing goes for these screws right here into the receiver. They're uh, fine thread and the receiver is aluminum. This magazine cradle arms are now steel and the screws are steel. So take care when you uh, secure those. Okay, managed to get the screws installed and the cradle arms and the magazine tube are now securely in place. Uh, still getting a little bit of sticking here when uh, the forehand is all the way to the rear. It's not too bad if you actually, you know, rack it like you're supposed to with a little bit of force. So, uh, not too big of a deal. It will probably work itself in after a while. So now I'm ready to install the trigger plate or trigger group. There we have the plate. Get the receiver up here. And it's simply Slides in, tilt it a little bit this way, and it should go right in place. Make sure it's aligned, of course. And you're just gonna sort of push it down um, until the screw holes align. Uh, I'm sorry, the pin holes, and then install the pins. Trigger plate and trigger group is installed. I just tested the action here and it is a little bit sticky, but like I said, it's not its not like it's jamming. You can definitely feel that there's a little bit of resistance. So now we're uh, ready to put the barrel on. And here's basically the reverse process. You get the barrel. There are uh, two cuts here at the top of the barrel that are line up with uh, <clears throat> nubs in the receiver. So you want to make sure those get lined up like this. And to secure the barrel, we're going to thread on the magazine tube extension after we drop. after we drop in the follower and the actual spring. Right, magazine tube extension is on, securely in place at the rear, holding, well, not really. I think it needs to go a little bit more. It turns out that because I've had the magazine tube extension off, and I had screwed the magazine tube extension all the way down into this uh, coupler nut. Uh, the threads of the magazine tube were over halfway in here. So when I tried to put it on to clamp the barrel down, uh, this, the bottom of this magazine extension tube hit the magazine tube. So I had to uh, tighten on the nut first all the way down, make sure the barrel was secure, and then put the extension on. You can see here at the front, very, very slightly, that the magazine tube is sitting a tiny bit further forward than the actual barrel. Not 
by much, but a little bit. So just a tip there. Um, what I have left to install is the magazine clamp <clears throat> and the rail piece for it. So let's see if I can do that without messing anything up. Just as I uh, thought I was done, I was wondering why my follower was going back and forth without any resistance. Turns out I forgot to put the spring in. So there's a cool uh, life hack here. There's a hex indexed cap at the end of the magazine tube extension that you can undo. And so now I'll be able to slide my spring in from that way without having to disassemble the gun any further. So let me just take care of that. There we go. <clears throat> Tin coated steel magazine tube cradle arms installed. That wasn't very difficult at all, was it? Ha ha ha. So basically, what I would like to say about this is that is probably the most difficult job you can do uh, on this rifle since it pretty much requires that you take it completely apart and you have the shell latch arms going out of place and um, yeah just a big hassle so if you're not very familiar with the 870 cam 870 or you don't have a lot of patience I would suggest either that you go watch my uh, tech videos I'll put a link up here or that you hand this over to a uh, friend of yours or a, a, an airsoft gunsmith that has experience with this because it can uh, escalate pretty quickly you know I've been I've disassembled this probably about a dozen times by now not this one but the Cam 70 platform and even though I know how it works and I don't have to take it apart and put it together it's still um, a lot of work and uh, a lot of sweat so that being said, this is starting to look like a pretty tricked out shotgun. We got the tin coated shell lifter. We have a tin coated follower in there. We have the SAI tin coated bolt. Let's see. Right. Uh, we have the tin coated pump arms and now the tin coated steel uh, magazine tube cradle arms. Whew. I uh, definitely need a, a break after that. Uh, I have one more video to record for today, then I'm going to take a break. And uh, I hope, uh, I'm not going to say I hope you enjoyed this video because it's not very fun to watch. But hopefully someone out there gets some sort of uh, use out of this video. That's it for uh, this time. I'll see you guys in the next video.